what does the word gutsy mean to you? Ooh, gutsy. So listen from your gut, honor that because in our gut lies our wisdom and intuition, honor what is there, say what you need to say and be fucking gutsy doing it. You're listening to The Gutsy Podcast, where we talk about all things real, raw, and ridiculous about running a business authentically. Whether you need an inspirational pick-me-up or a swift kick in the mental ass, The Gutsy Podcast is your bi-weekly guide to getting out of your head and back into action. I'm Laura Ora, branding and mindset coach for female entrepreneurs, CEO of Works & Co., and your host on this journey through entrepreneurship. It's time to fuel your gutsy. How many times have you felt angered by something only to push it down or write it off? How many times have you wanted to rage out, but decided that it wasn't acceptable and chose to bottle it up instead? Anger is a primal and natural emotion that wants to be expressed just as much as joy, sadness, and excitement do. When we learn to honor and safely express anger, we can free ourselves from the density that it holds in our minds and in our bodies. Today, we're talking with anger and communication coach Vanessa Alfaro about honoring and releasing anger to transform your life and your relationships. Vanessa turned her rageful, traumatic upbringing into what inspires her to do what she does today. While she was once ashamed of her rage, she now believes that anger and rage are opportunities for deep transformational healing. She developed a revolutionary process that changed and saved her life, the anger algorithm, and the solution to releasing up bottled up rage that she had been carrying around throughout her life for years in her marriage. Her transformational results led to her work with anger and communication. She's been a coach for over 10 years and uses the algorithm to help married women relieve bottled up anger and resentment so they can skillfully navigate conflict and have empowered conversations. Before we chat with the wonderful Vanessa today, I just want to let you know that we are less than two weeks away from the first day of the five-day mindfuckery workshop. This workshop is designed to help you get out of your head change the cycle of your thoughts and have the right tools in your tool belt so that you can shift these thoughts moving forward and of them taking over your hour, your day, your week, your month, and sometimes even your year. You are insanely capable. You know that, right? The vision that you keep getting, that idea that keeps popping in your head, that, that bigness that wants to like erupt out of you, that is truly who you are before the world told you what you should be before the thoughts, feelings, and expectations of others planted themselves in your mind. My role and goal in your life is to help you get out of your head so that you can start taking action that pulls those things closer, that allows you to step into your business, that helps business to be more simplified, that pulls in aligned clients, that supports the lifestyle that you know that you want to live. Look, it's all there. It's all at your fingertips. But first, we've got to start with the mind and what's going on in there because those things cannot grow in an environment that consistently puts out the flame. So that's what we're going to do alongside other like-minded women in business that are ready to embrace their next chapter of life, whether it's a small next step or a really big leap. When you have the tools to shift your mind, my friend, you become unfucking stoppable So I invite you, come take the workshop learn alongside, build some new friends, gain some new tools, and start kicking fucking ass. Registration is open at lauraora.com forward slash events, and we kick everything off on July 24th. All right, my friend, this is an incredible episode with juicy deliciousness about really tapping into your empowered rage. So let's get into today's episode. My new dear, beautiful friend, Vanessa, welcome to the Gutsy Podcast. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. And I'm so curious what what's going to emerge and unfold here for us and your listeners. So yeah, let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. So when I first saw your submission, and I, you know, one of the first things I do is go to the social accounts just to kind of get a feel for, you know, who, who my guests are and what they're all about. 
And I saw you dancing and um, talking about empowered anger and empowered rage and like really helping women to embrace this side of us that isn't talked about a whole lot. And I was like, hell yes, let's book this beautiful soul. Let's have a conversation about it. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was, I searched for podcasts and I came across yours and I was super excited, just your message and your website. And it sounded so fun. And, and I thought, yeah, I want to, I want to apply. Let's see what's going to happen. I felt like a, like a fan. <laughs> Am I going to oh. get on the show? <laughs> oh, that's so, you know, that kind of comment will never get old to me. And I, I so appreciate that very, very much. So so I think one of the most incredibly beautiful things about um, the guests that I get to interview is I find that we we often teach what we most need to learn. Mm-hmm. And we've often gone through a journey to gain the knowledge, the experience, the know-how, the perspective to be able to then share and empower women that may be going through a similar path, just a few steps beside or behind us. And so I know that you have a really empowering and incredible story. I'd love to hear where all of this started and how this translated into a business for you. Yes. So, uh, you know, I, I made this video actually not that long ago uh, last week. And I talk about how my soul chose Rachel families. I was born into Rachel family. So, you know, and it was, it's in, yes, there was abuse and there was violence and emotional, all of it. And the the part that was really hard as a child was that I was surrounded by adults. Uh, my grandmother raised me. My mother died when I was three. My father was a raging alcoholic and couldn't take care of me. Mm-hmm. So my my mom's mom raised me and I was surrounded by adults who were really rageful and it was just under the surface. So this energy, I, and I was a very sensitive child. I could just feel that the energy of the shadowy energy of rage and lack and scarcity and oppression and and there was meanness and so as a child I shrunk I made myself small I didn't want to be like my family members like the adults I wanted kindness however as a teenager I decided to fight that because I didn't want to be abused or bullied and there was a family member in particular who I'd fight back against and and then I, I hated the aftermath of it. I did not want to be a rageful person. I didn't want to model that behavior like my family. So I stuffed, I stuffed, I stuffed. I tried everything in my will and power to hide, control, contain, closet away my rage. And it just it, it's just something that I've had to work on my entire life. And it wasn't until my marriage where it, it really surfaced again. And I had to deal with it. I really had to deal with it though, because it was coming at a cost to my health and well-being. I knew I was holding back in my life, in my sexuality, how it was showing up in the world. I wasn't being truly authentic. And I just, I, I just started to really think, wait a minute, there has to be a way to express this part of me that is violent, that's rageful, without hurting myself or my beloved. And there must be a way, there must be a solution. So I started researching and then I developed the anger algorithm and that, that was it. That was it for me. And, you know, I say it's not anger management because when I think of anger management, I often think of control Mm. and, or there's something incomplete about the practices that I learned out there for anger management. Whereas the anger algorithm is like, you take care of yourself in the moment, you know, when you're, when you're angry, you're pissed off, you, you bring awareness and an emotional maturity to the situation if you can. And even if it's just naming, I'm really fucking angry right now, I need to leave. And then you go take care of yourself. And what, what the algorithm did for me was give me permission to actually really express this dark shadowy part of me that I've kept hidden for the better part of my life. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. You know, it's, it's proof, right? Not, I mean, science proves this, but it's like real life physical proof that 
the beliefs, the habits, the uh, conditioning that we absorb as a child plays an incredible role as our life as adults. You know, it shows up in ways that we often don't even recognize, right? It just becomes the way of life. It's just like, you know, this is how I am. And it's, you know, you said one of my favorite words in the whole world, which is awareness. When you can build awareness and realize that those, that's not actually innately who you are, but rather things that were unintentionally given to you and that you're allowed to release them and give them back, right? Like, and give them back, meaning like out into the universe, release them from yourself um, and really take control of and discover who you actually are without this thing that was given to you when you were such a precious, beautiful child. Yes, I know. I, you know, what you're saying about these patterns and behaviors, they're so ingrained in us. I was just telling a dear friend of mine last night, I, you know, that I've had an incredible, deep spiritual awakening. I mean, I've been waking up my whole life. Because I hear I've, you. I <laughs> I've hear been, you. <laughs> like, like I've, I've been working on my healing, healing my heart. You know, that's been really my agenda <laughs> to heal my heart, to heal the loss that I've experienced in my life and so many things. And it's just, I was reflecting last night. I thought, wow, I, even though I was working on myself and yes, I had a meditation practice and going to therapy and doing all these things for my soul. I really felt, felt like I was in a dream and sleeping because we're so wrapped up and caught up in the conditioning and just the automatic behaviors that we engage in without really thinking it's, it's sort of like breathing, right? We don't really think about our breath. We just kind of, it just happens. And so we, right. these patterns just are in us. And so this pattern of, you know, this expression of anger and rage, I, like I said, I just denied it for so long. And, and then I knew it was in me, but it was too exhausting to keep hiding it. So really mm-hmm. embracing it and turning towards it. And, and, and that's the thing that's hard with personal growth and development is we are all suffering. We all have our problems and we all want happiness. And so we're chasing what's going to make us happy. What's this quick fix when what I've discovered is for me and what I help my clients do is just actually let's stop and pause and turn towards that thing that we are running from Mm. and really look at it and love it and be with it and cry and do all those things with it. And that's what I've been doing with anger and rage for the past several years now. (laughs) And I tell you, it, it is, I'm the, the waking up and the building of awareness has been exponential for me. It's been profound. Yeah. I find that, um, that once you start to have awareness, it's like, you can't go back, right? <clears throat> you know, yes. it, it just, it builds on top of one another and top of one another. But I think that that is so powerful because the awareness piece is it's everything, right? Like it's the awareness. And then what do you do with the awareness? What action are you taking with that new knowledge that you have? And you said something really profound is like, it was too exhausting to keep hiding it. And I think a lot of women listening right now probably took a big ass sigh when you said that, Mm -hmm. because I think that that's the space that a lot of women are living in right now is like it, like I'm, I'm forcing myself to hold this in. I'm forcing myself to hold it all together. I'm like, I have all these motions, but it's not time right now. I don't want to do it in front of this person. And like, you know, you can even like feel that kind of build up inside. And so what do you say to the women that are experiencing that, that space right now where they, they are holding it all together? Yes. Um, I just, I, you know, your listeners can't see us, but I really feel it in your body Mm -hmm. as you're describing this holding, holding it all in. Right. Um, oh my goodness. So that's, that's, what I was doing, holding it all in, holding it in, holding it in. And it's, and and, until, you know, I, I couldn't take it anymore. And eventually in my marriage, I'd, I would have a rageful outburst and, you know, just, it just was an ongoing thing. 
So instead of holding it in, in those moments, you really, it, and again, this is about awareness. This is about permission and allowing yourself to go to a private, quiet place and just fucking let it all out. However, mm-hmm. that looks really embrace the, the crying, the screaming, whatever that looks like. I can't take this anymore. Just uh, it's like letting yourself have a meltdown and just being in a state of, you know, quote unquote, weakness, vulnerability, just, and again, this takes a lot of allowing and permission to give yourself that space to say, throw your hands up and say, fuck it. I can't keep my shit together right now. And I'm going to let it fucking out. And however that looks for you, maybe you just are on the floor crying. I'm not sure. Maybe you're just taking deep breaths, you know, whatever that is, but it's about giving yourself permission where it's because your body, especially. So that's the thing is like this exhaustion that I was feeling. My body was screaming, slow down, Vanessa. You cannot do this anymore. You simply can't do it anymore those patterns and behaviors, what I was engaging in to control and hide and manage my body was saying, no, that's it. That's enough. And some of the clients that you've worked with, and even with yourself, have you found and what what's happening in the body when we're holding in that rage and the anger? Like, do you see things manifest in our body? Like what are some physical symptoms that people might experience by holding all of this in? So I believe wholeheartedly that much of our depression, anxiety, physical diseases, everything is from us suppressing our emotions. I'm an absolute believer in that. Um, And, you know, I've studied and researched the chakras and, and there are studies out there, there are, but they're not connected to the medical world. So anyway, that's a whole nother topic, but that is a whole nother topic. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, but I believe that when we suppress our emotions and our experience, it just all leads to illness, any kind of form of illness. So for me personally, suppressing my emotions um, led to an autoimmune disease, exhaustion, and just this lack of vitality, all that has shifted. And in, and in my clients, what it sh- it shows up for them in very different ways um but but often just the physical manifestations of anger from holding it in there's a blockage somewhere in their body whether it's in their throat maybe their heart their shoulders their head migraines mm. migraines are big when you don't release anger and rage um in men it's the lower back um so all sorts of things manifest and show up. However, we don't make that connection. We don't think, wait a minute, why am I sick right now? Why is my body hurting? Instead, we, we try all these other things. And of course it's normal to do that. And I, I, uh, now I go to that place of what emotion needs to be released right now. Mm. Do I need to cry? Am I angry? Do I just need to be still and daydream? What's going on here? And that's, gosh, that is such a beautiful space to get into, right? Like, I think that, you know, most people want to skip over the feeling because it's uncomfortable, right? We just want to get to the thing that we actually want. But the, the only way to receive, to be in a space to even receive those things, to be able to experience those things, to be able to appreciate those things is through. And when you're carrying all of this emotional baggage, and especially anger is a very dense emotion, even, you know, you're, you're pushing and you're forcing and you're hustling and you're building and you're scratching and you're clawing. And you're like, why is none of this working? And then if you get a little bit of a taste of it, you're like, why am I not even fucking happy now? Like, you know, like it's this really, I I think a, like a deep cycle. And I think that if we recognize that like, Hey, if we do what feels like the hard work now, right? Because feeling and going through those notions, it's not easy, right? No one's like, you know what I want to do today? Fucking rage it out. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I want to do today? Cry half the day. No, like no one's 
typically waking up saying those things, but if we allow ourselves to feel them, they get to be released. They move, right? Like energy gets stored in our physical body, which is what you're talking about. And if it doesn't move, it just compacts, right? And it's heavier and everything gets more dense. And so I think if we give ourselves permission to say like, okay, I know this is maybe not going to be fun, but this, this is going to liberate me. This is going to allow me to experience my life the way that I know I can, if I give myself permission to do this. Yes. It's so true. I know. Right. And see, here's the thing. And I love how, what you're saying about anger and its density and rage, right? It's true. It's like, so feelings are sensations in our bodies. So we, you know, feeling our emotions, energy in motion, we're energetic beings. All matter comes from part of the sun, including our bodies. Our bodies are dense matter. And when we're not moving those emotions, all of that energy gets stuck and trapped and it does weigh us down. That's another part of it. And, and here, and for many of us, although I do see a shift generationally in what's happening with parenting. But for many of us, you know, middle aged, maybe older, we, we are not taught as children how to really be with our emotions, yeah. how to healthily be with our emotions, how to be present with them and how to allow them to allow ourselves to move through it. And then, and then trust that we're not going to fall into some black hole of emotion never coming out, but that we will come out of it because our emotions are like the weather, literally like the weather, the weather, especially here in San Francisco, every day, all day long, it fluctuates and it changes. It's cloudy. It's foggy. It's sunny. It's windy. It's calm. That's who we are. Yeah. So yeah. (laughs) Why, why do you think that anger particularly gets such a bad rap compared to maybe some other emotions? In my study of it, I believe it's, so anger is a primary emotion and it's used for protection. So we as humans have used it to protect our food, our loved ones, our shelter, our territory. And so back in the day, you know, we were, or people still are violent, but extremely violent, right? Kill, but at its worst When we, you know, express anger and rage as humans, we have the capacity to kill another human being. And so as we evolved over time and and growing and evolving and having our needs met, such as shelter, food, clothing, more quote unquote stability in our lives, it's, you know, anger has been this destructive thing that has in a way, no longer serves us. We don't need to be rageful and acting out. But as humans, we haven't like grown out of that primal darkness. And and so instead it's like, well, what do we do with anger? We either act it out super destructively or it's just there energetically in our bodies and you feel somebody's anger and rage or for, for us women, not all women, but a lot of us, we just hold it in and mask it and suck it up. So we, we just, we, nobody, and, uh, and this is another big one on the news. Do we ever see anything ever positive about how anger and rage are being expressed? No, no it's all destructive. So, so in our, in our subconscious we literally are like, anger is bad. It is a bad thing because if we express it, if we really express it, we're going to hurt someone and we don't want to hurt anyone. We don't want to be mean. We don't want to be regretful. So it's just, it's so layered. And, and, and this is what I love about the anger algorithm, because when I, when I work on the anger algorithm and I'm having a really deep release with rage, it is fucking dark. If somebody saw me, they would think, whoa, what's wrong with her? It's very primal. And it's what I have to do for myself. And and during that moment, there's deep, deep release from my body of this energy 
often, you know, I end up in, with tears. I get to the root of, of that wound because, because that's what anger and rage are covering that wound, that collective wound we all have. So I get to it and I have understanding. I have peace. I move through the algorithm and there's just a sense of relief. So yeah, that was a very long answer to your question. No, it was <laughs> I, I love when you like go into it. Like I can see your body language and just like how you kind of relive and experience that. And I think that that's, you know, that connection with your own self and your own body is, is everything. I mean, it's beautiful. It's powerful. It's um, empowering. It's freeing. It's, it's all of the good things. Right. And so by giving yourself permission to really go into that kind of primal expression, you're, you have so much more capacity to be more of you. Right. And so if, how do we start to flip the perspective then on anger and rage is bad to anger and rage is empowering. Right. So, so with the algorithm, when you move through it and I've experienced this, my clients I work with, there's a, a deep sense of relief. There's a somatic relief. It's very cathartic because it's physical. It's, 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 uh, it's like, it's powerful medicine. It's almost like, you know, when you ingest something to have some sort of experience, right? Well, the anger algorithm is like, you are engaging your body, your mind, your heart, your, your being, your experience. So there's a deep, deep release. There's a tremendous amount of relief. And, and then you get to the clarity of, well, what, what am I really angry about? And you have such a deep understanding of yourself and what it is that you want and what you need. And this is the juice. This is the gold. This is the nugget because a lot of us don't know what we want and what we need. And if we don't, and that's, what's causing the anger. It's almost like a child who doesn't know that toddler. I don't know how to tell you what I want and what I need. So I'm going to get really frustrated right now. So guess what? As adults, when we don't know what we want and what we need, and we're not clear about that, what happens? Frustration. Or maybe we do know what we want and what we need, but we're too fucking vulnerable to ask for help or whatever that want or need is. So when you start moving and releasing this energy, you know that you talked about the density of anger. What happens is energetically that density loosens and you start you know, we're energetic beings, we're light, and you start creating light in your body and your heart begins to open and you tap into this inner wisdom of what you want in your life. And when you come from that clarity and that your inner wisdom, you then are able to have an empowered communication and talk about these things from a very different place very different place because you're just in your, in your knowing. So, so there's the, so that's sort of what's one of the things that's on the other side of working through anger and rage. And then the other big, big piece is, you know, this is really anger and rage cover up those wounds, right? It's a, remember it's a, primary emotion used for protection. So anger and rage is actually protecting those most wounded places in us where all of our patterns and strategies came from. So when you start releasing it, you, you get closer to that wound and you can heal that wound so that you can really change the behaviors and patterns that no longer serve you. So it goes deep. <laughs> mm, it's deep, but that's the transformation, yes, right? That's yes. the power. That's the power of giving yourself permission to feel and yes. to, ex and to express and to, you know, let things out and go and through and just, Oh, it's just such like a juicy yes. type of experience that yes, you you're feeling all these things, but this is where you get to have the actual change. Yes. Right. This yes. is what impacts your life. This is what impacts your relationships. This is what impacts your career. This is what impacts your 
capacity to love and to receive love, like all of these things like get to be amplified, which, which is incredible. You know, our conversation with Vanessa right now is reminding me that we all have these kind of hidden tendencies. And that's why one of the exercises that we'll be focusing on in the Mindfuckery workshop is getting to know what your tendencies are. These are kind of like the silent habits or your go-tos when things get hard, things get weird, things get scary, things get big, things get loud. We all have these kind of tendencies that we lean on and towards. And while sometimes they can be productive, more often than not, they are the things that close us up, shrink our energy, and stop us from moving forward. The great news is if we get to know our tendencies, we can see them coming like a freight train, which means we have the power to shift them. The Mind Factory Workshop is so much about getting to know your aligned self again and having the tools to help you move forward. So that instead of these thoughts taking over your day, week, month, or year, we are now recognizing them. We are shifting them. We're getting back into alignment and taking action from our centered, grounded, connected space. Class begins on July 24th, less than two weeks from now. So go to lauraora.com forward slash events to register and grab your seat today. You know, you've mentioned the anger algorithm a few times, which is your signature method, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Yes. So I would love, can you give us kind of a walkthrough of what, what is the anger algorithm and how is it used? Yes. So I'll get, I'll give you an overview. Um, by the way, algorithm means step-by-step, a logical step-by-step process. Mm. So, you know, it's a, it's a multidimensional process that engages all aspects of who you are, your emotions, your body, your mind. Um, these are steps that you work through. I facilitate the process. I, you know, whether my clients have a hard time accessing anger or they are connected to their anger. They're, they're ready like, to I'm go. Ready. <laughs> right. They're like, come on, baby, give this to me because I'm ready to release it. Um, so, you know, whatever the, the client needs. So then I facilitate and guide my clients through this process where, where you actually write out the steps and then you say the steps out loud and, and it can go very, very deep depending on the type of work that the client is ready for. And so it's, it's really about moving through the full expression of anger. There is definitely a venting component to it, but it's not just about venting. Um, you're breathing. I'm helping you get access into your heart for what you want. And then clients struggle with what they want. So it's a, it's a multidimensional path and a process where you move through the full expression of anger to get what's under it and to gain that clarity. So then you can decide, okay, yes, I'm ready to talk to this person about whatever happened, or, you know, it, I don't actually need to talk to this person. I'm, I feel, I feel complete with where I am. So it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful tool and it's lifelong you know this the the other thing about the anger algorithm and what i've embraced about myself is that i'm not trying to make my anger and rage go away and that's what i did the, for the better part of my life as i wanted to be rid of this part of me and so it's about embracing it it's about knowing in the moment oh yeah i'm really fucking pissed right now i need to work through the algorithm And I still work through it to this day. So it really is a a powerful lifelong tool that I hope people will teach others. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so important that you share that it's, this is lifelong work. Yes. Because I think sometimes we set ourselves up for, we have this expectation that once we do the work once, then it's done. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) and going. Yeah. And then we go into that and then we're like, well, I already did the work. So why the fuck is it showing up here again? Right. And then you get more pissed off and then you have a whole new rage, right? Like it's, it's kind of this vicious cycle and knowing that it's not about, we're not trying to get rid of anger. It's a, it's a natural human experience that would be like getting rid of sadness or getting rid of joy, right? Like we don't want to get rid of things. We Mm -hmm. want to be better equipped to process them or to experience them. And it sounds like that's what the anger algorithm really is all about is like learning how to have anger with you on the journey, but it's no longer ruling your life. Yes. And I love that word that you just said, 
It's about learning how to process, just about learning how to process these intense emotions, how to move through them, how to get to what's under it. And it's a journey for you. You it, So it's, it's like, yeah, how do we process this and so that we can move on? And then yes, we process again, and then we move on and we process again. And so yeah. this, this medicine for me, you know, the, the anger algorithm medicine is really helped me to just accept this emotional, like I said, it's like the weather, this emotional thing that happens day to day throughout the day. And it's, it's incredible. And, you know, I'm being radically honest in that because of the algorithm I am the most grounded stable healed inside that I ever have been in my life wow. and yes and it it feels sometimes just even last night I was just you know I had I was crying for the gratitude of the peace that I feel in my mind my body my heart and soul music used to pound in my head for years. I mean, it was distracting because, because I didn't know it at the time. I was so stressed out and all the things that I was doing. And it was sort of this form of protection. And in 2010, I was studying with the Zen priest and um, really dropped into a Zen meditation practice. And, and I, I asked her about this. I said, will this pounding music go away? And she said, yeah, it'll, it'll eventually go away. Well, it actually didn't. It didn't go away with my meditation practice. It went away with me releasing my rage. Because that music was tied to the rage. It, it was, there was something about like, so this pounding music was sort of like an anxiety coping thing mm. that I had created in my mind and in my being to just cope. It was very... It was a form of dealing with the stress, with my stress. It was a form of like, of just like dealing with what I didn't want to look at inside myself, which really is just the tremendous amount of grief and sadness from my childhood. Yeah. And so rage actually releasing rage. And this is what happens to my clients is it gets you into a vulnerable and open place. So you can look these wounded tender parts in you to heal them the healing is what is going to change the destructive behaviors and patterns that just don't serve you so yeah absolutely a uh, couple things that i yes. want to ask you about so you mentioned venting yes i think that that is a very important thing to talk about because i think that you can vent to death <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It, and what I mean by that is like just continuously sitting in the pot of shit, right? Like I'm constantly living it over and over. I'm telling this person, I'm telling that person, I'm telling this person. When does venting, I think venting is important, right? Because it gives you a chance to vocalize some things that you're thinking and feeling. But I also think that there is a point where we need to transition that, right? Otherwise you keep kind of reliving the moment. What's the best way to know, like, okay, I have vented enough and now it's time to do something else that is proactive, that helps me versus ruminating in it. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And it's such a beautiful question. So with the anger algorithm, like I said, it, you know, to interfere with the neurological mechanics causing anger, you write the steps, you say them out loud. You have to work through all the steps. Now, depending on where you are and how ready my client is, but and for me personally, the venting can actually be really fucking physical. It's not just like I'm saying things. It's no, I am screaming. I am using my body. I am like, it is physical. And what happens? So the venting goes beyond it. It turns into something primal and physical and like, like I said earlier, you know, if somebody saw me really fucking venting and releasing, they freak out. They would think <laughs> like, oh my gosh, what is happening? So what happens is this is, this is why I'm certain probably a lot of us are afraid of anger and rage is because it gets physical. 
and I do this alone in a private, quiet place, or there might be somebody who's supporting me, who's witnessing me and holding space for me. Mm. So what happens is when you actually engage your body and your voice and the tears, your body, you can't be in that state. It actually ends. It ends. So, and then you continue on with the algorithm. Even when my clients are, when they've worked through the algorithm and they're like, I'm still fucking pissed. (laughs) It's because that means you haven't released it from your body. Mm. So it's like your mind, the egoic part, the judgmental, the blaming, the shaming, the victimized part is like this motherfucker, you know, blah, blah, blah. That can go on and on and on yep. forever, right? Your mind, our minds don't turn off and it wants to cling to, to the injustice. And, you know, it's like, and it's, that is an indication you have to release this from your body. Mm. yeah so if you're so like the venting so I, I'm seeing like two different types of venting like you were talking about the physical expression of releasing it that's yes. a form of venting yes. versus the form of venting where we're sitting with a friend or a family member or a spouse and we're just we're fighting for the injustice right we're yes. fighting for the well I was right and this and that and I'm so mad at this person like that will just I mean that is never ending right and that just I think that that just builds it, right? It just makes it bigger and more gnarly and all that kind of stuff. But if we don't go through the process then of like, okay, I'm I'm done talking about it. I'm going to feel it and I'm going to release it. Yes, I'm going to work through it. And I'm really going to get to, why am I so angry about this anyway? Hmm. Because there's something deeper going on. So you might be angry about the injustice in the world, well, guess what? That's tapping into some wound in you. Mm. And so you're, when we're venting and angry about the injustice in the world, and it's like, wait a minute, why? What's really happening in me? Because some people get angry about certain things and some people don't. Right. And so anger and rage, it's just like, uh, it's like that, that signal, the gaslight, like, ooh, what's here? What juiciness and richness is here for me to look at? And and do I want to look at it? (laughs) Or do I want to (laughs) keep complaining and venting and being like, (laughs) but you can, it's a choice. It's awareness. It's a choice. I want to look at it because why am I so triggered? What can I learn about myself? What might need, what needs healing here? And and what's going on for me. So I'm so glad you mentioned this too, because a lot of anger management work is about, oh, just vent, hit the pillow, be whatever. And then that's it. And for some people, it's like, well, it actually exacerbates it. But that's why you have to work through the, all the steps of the algorithm, because um, it gets to that place of understanding. And when you have that understanding and clarity about why you're really pissed off, there's like, okay, yeah, I'm good. (laughs) You know, I think that there's no coincidence why rage rooms are becoming very popular. People have a lot of pent up energy, a lot of pent up anger, a lot of pent up emotion. And I've seen some videos where people go to these rage rooms and they're just wailing this stuff, right? And they're in a safe, controlled environment. So they're not hurting themselves or others. But then you just like, people will have a freaking breakdown. I mean, we're in full on meltdown at this point, but that's the power of the release, right? Like that is a release because you have allowed yourself to feel those things. So what are some ways, what are maybe some of your favorite ways or some ways that your clients like to feel and express anger? How can listeners maybe start to experiment with this on their own? So the first thing is, to really give yourself permission and to acknowledge I'm fucking angry right now. And one of the things that you can offer to yourself is self empathy. And this is rooted in nonviolent communication. 
We get angry because we have unmet needs. These needs are universal. Everyone has these needs. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, your socioeconomic background. So if you are, maybe you're angry because you need space, you need air, you need clear communication. I'm angry because I need affection. I'm angry because I need understanding. So when you're angry in the moment, give yourself that self-empathy. I'm, and you say I'm angry, not you're making me angry because then you're, mm-hmm. blaming, you're putting that on someone else and, and then it leaves you as a victim. You're doing this to me. Just own it. I'm angry because I need, and you fill in the blank and then you decide, okay, I'm, what am I going to do right now? Do I, do I need to drive in my car and just like do some venting and, and then keep keep identifying what do I need here? What do I need? Maybe journal, right. Uh, and, and let it out that way. And, and then whatever, you know, stream, our journals are, are very precious, sacred tools, stream of consciousness, just let it fucking flow and then go somewhere and read everything you wrote out loud. It's a good place to start, but to, to really come back to your needs and you can get a list of needs online they're they're just google search needs nonviolent communication and you'll find a bunch of these needs and when you start understanding what you're needing it's like yeah i need clear communication okay well what does that mean to you what does clear communication mean to you? Because that means something different for, it's different for everyone. So, so when you have this clarity and understanding, then you can start communicating. And, and that's, that's the big piece. So, and this takes a lot of courage, right? Because we get angry and, and upset because we've been triggered. And maybe it's from a colleague or a parent or a or a spouse or our children or a friend. And it's like, well, are you willing to have the conversation? So those are some ideas to, you know, just give yourself that permission, give yourself the self-empathy, get really clear on what you need and what that means to you, and then decide to have a talk. And, mm. and that's a, that's a really big component in my work as well. You know, I, I've taught myself and I teach my clients how to have those difficult conversations because those, that's something else many of us haven't been taught. How do you work through the disagreements and the disappointments and the misunderstandings? How do you work through the conflict? So it's, a, it's, a, it's another big piece of my work. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. A lot of empathy, a lot of love and compassion for yourself and giving yourself the space to do and feel what you need to feel. What about for maybe some of the women that are like, you know, I'm, this is physical for me. I, I really need to express myself. You know, you mentioned the primal stuff. What are some safe and healthy ways to express anger and rage physically? So for me personally, I have had to, so this is my, well, you all don't see my office. I'm in my office right now. I have a mat, like a, like an exercise mat. I have, um, you know, one of those like noodles. I have some yoga pillows and I literally fucking go at it and beat the shit out of my pillows and it. I'll scream and I'll like, it is physical. It, it is, it, it's primal. I, I am like a wild animal in the jungle, just fucking going at it. And that's what I need because that's like, that's the rage I experienced and was around in my family. So everyone will be different. And, and I will tell you that it did take some time, even though I'd had rageful outbursts, it really took some time for me to access this place in me. That's just like, Ooh, I I am violent. And so I let it out of my body and I might do some primal screaming as well. If anyone engages in primal screaming, I just want you all to be careful with that. Um, And, you know, people talk about this online, primal screaming, try to scream from your gut, like, 
you're kind of like you're growling, like instead of just using your vocal cords, like mm. <laughs> scream from your belly. Um, and then, you know, once you scream afterwards, don't talk and gargle with a lot of warm salt, salty, salty water. So, you know, you, you find your way, you find what your body needs. And if it's stomping around, you know, it it goes beyond exercising. Yes. Yes. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. It's a whole, (laughs) it's like, yes, embrace this wild primal animal part in us that needs expression. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Like I can work a lot out on my Peloton, you know, especially if I pick the right ride with the right instructor with the right playlist, like I can really feel some things out. But that's very different than uh, something that I that I ended up doing allowed myself to do rather oh, yeah. um, a couple months ago was I threw a fucking tantrum. I haven't thrown a tantrum and I couldn't tell you how long like my husband and I were walking. I was super super frustrated about something like, and I didn't know how to express myself. And I literally just fucking let go. I'm like yes. stomping and punching, punching the air and like yes. yelling and gritting and like saying all these things that seem whatever. And I tell you, I slept so much better that night, yes. right? Like, like allowing your, like, I think we, we want to put judgment around what it looks like and what it sounds like. What are other people going to think about this? And, oh, is this being too much? Or, oh, am I a violent person? We want to put all these labels around it. But really, this is your power. Yes. This is your natural instinct. This is your ability to shift and move these things. And by compressing your needs, by compressing your feelings, we're only increasing the intensity of this feeling that you're already having. Yes. So I, I want to encourage everyone listening to like, give yourself permission to feel what you need to feel, you know, like that's, that's where if you're trying everything and it's not working, if you're hustling and bustling and busting your ass and it's not working, it's time to feel something different. It's it's time to do it differently. And this is a beautiful way to do that. Yes. Yes. And it is. And you are empowering yourself because with you really, when I've allowed myself, and I've said this a few times already to really fucking rage out, it would not be socially accepted by society. It's not. That's why I do it in a private, quiet place. And, you know, there, there might be shame entangled with your expression. There might be guilt. I hear this a lot. I don't want to put that negative energy out into the universe and cuss and you know, just, you know, be blah, dark. Well, here's the thing. The universe is infinite. It's infinite. And for me, like I said, you're releasing that negativity, that darkness, quote unquote, and it moves the energy to allow the light within you to be and to infuse and to brighten. And with that light comes a tremendous amount of self-acceptance as you are for who you are and a self-love that many of us, that's, that's a primal sacred wound, unworthy and lovable. So from this work, it's like radical self-acceptance, the self-love, and you know what? The universe needs a lot of us to start loving ourselves. <laughs> it sure does. It sure does. Rising yeah. tide lifts all ships, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and when with more love in the world, with more love in each and every single one of us, gosh, imagine the incredible, incredible things that can continue to surround us and be amplified. Yes. So get wild, ladies, women. Uh, ooh, get the fuck wild. <laughs> I love it. Get the fuck wild. That needs to be a t shirt, Vanessa. <laughs> that needs to be a t shirt. It's empowering, it's beautiful. Um, it's sacred. It's you that no, no further explanation needed. Gosh, Vanessa, I am obsessed with the work that you do. I think that it is needed. I think it is brilliant. I think it is empowering. I think it is something that a lot of women have probably been waiting for. So thank you for doing what you do and being who you are and, and going through this journey on your own so that you can turn around and teach others. I want to make sure that everyone knows where to find you. So what is the best place? Where can everyone find all of your magic? 
Yeah. So I am out there on, on the interweb. And if you just go to my website, vanessaalfaro.co.co, I often on the, on my landing page have, you know, whatever I'm offering during this time, you know, I know this won't be released till later, but I do, I'm starting live workshops again, um, but I have one-to-one coaching. So if there's a woman who's listening, they want to get on a call with me, you know, to talk about how the anger algorithm can support them. You just go to callwithvanessa.com. So it's, it's pretty simple to, to contact me from out there. Amazing. Yeah. And my favorite question in the whole wide world to always ask is what does the word gutsy mean to you? Ooh, gutsy. So listen from your gut, honor that because in our gut lies our wisdom and intuition. Honor what is there. Say what you need to say and be fucking gutsy doing it. <laughs> love it. That's going to be a sound bite, everybody. <laughs> I love it. Vanessa, thank you so much for your time, your love and your energy. I appreciate you and everything that you shared with us here today. Oh, you're so welcome, Laura. Thank you for having me. I'm really honored and I hope you got a lot out of this listeners. Thank you. Always. You know, about halfway through this beautiful episode, I started talking about tendencies and it got me really thinking about how this really is such a key part in shifting your mindset. When you shift your mindset, you shift your thoughts. When you shift your thoughts, you shift your action. And my friend, when you shift your action, that's where the fucking gold mine is. And I'm not just talking money. I'm talking freedom. I'm talking peace. I'm talking excitement. I'm talking joy. I'm talking business structure. I'm talking clarity. So you can see how if we don't recognize our tendencies, we're kind of short sheeting ourselves, aren't we? That's why this Thursday's Power Back episode is all about getting to know what your tendencies are and, spoiler alert, how to start shifting them. This will be a little nugget taste of the Mindfucker class that starts on July 24th. Again, registration for that is already open. We start very soon. So lauraora.com forward slash events to sign up for that event today. In the meantime, I would love to hear what you took away from this episode. You can message me on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. You can find me using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.